What's up, y'all? Um, I do have something that I would like to speak upon. Because apparently some people don't understand the post about my dad, or my now ex-dad, I should say, and his photo that I posted of him. So I will invite those of you that don't understand. And I will explain. Hey Aaron, welcome dude, what's up? There's people to understand why I did what I did. I had a very legitimate reason. Now, you guys are probably wondering... Why I posted what I posted about my dad earlier with him and his wife. Or I should say his psychopathic wife because she is not right upstairs. Now, yes, as it may be true, my dad did serve in the army from the time I was born for about 17 years. And don't get me wrong, I respect the hell out of him for that. But what I don't respect is how he treated me when I went down to visit him back in 2014 down in Florida. This man and his wife, because you guys don't know my parents did split. But this man and his wife not only physically assaulted me in their own home for no reason. But they also verbally abused me and talked down and about my mom and my family. And all this man does, and this is completely true, all this man does is drink alcohol all day and smoke pot and get strung out on drugs all day. That's all he does. The man is only sold. But he looks 80-something because of the drugs and everything that he's been doing. Like I said, I respect what he did for the military. But what I don't respect is him as a man and what he did. And for those of you wondering, did he ever see action? No, he didn't. He never once was deployed. He likes to act like he was, but he was never deployed. And yeah, he moved around from base to base in different countries every now and then. But he never actually saw any action at all. He never once saw combat. 
All this man saw was base to base in different countries and along here in the U.S. Even though he likes to act like he has, he really hasn't. And my family knows the truth. He never once saw combat. Now, let me tell you guys what he did to me in detail when I was down there. Starting off with the first thing, doing into drinking and got me drunk. When before that, I had never had a drop of alcohol in my life, ever. I had never drank or any of that. This man took a half empty bottle of vodka and mixed it with, I think it was like Kool Aid or something. I forget what I was drinking, but it tasted real fizzy like soda. And I was like, you know, this is really good. What is this? And I look over on the counter and there's a half empty bottle of motherfucking vodka sitting there. And he's sitting there laughing. Next thing I know, my stomach starts to, you know, get real upset and start turning. Next thing I know, I'm in the bathroom peeking my guts out for an hour and a half straight. Number two thing that this man did, well, not really him, but his wife. Me and his wife got into it really bad one night. So what did she do? Locked me outside at six in the morning when it's freezing cold out. And mind you, they live in the middle of nowhere. They live out in the middle of the freaking boonies in Florida. So you got to figure, at 6 in the morning, when it's only 60 something degrees, it feels like it's a lot colder than me. And then the third thing he did, which to this day I still have a physical scar from, you know, and it killed me because I do have a scar from it, is I actually had an ingrown hair turn into a very infected on my leg. And at first I thought nothing of it. I thought like, you know, it was just red. It was going to go away. Next thing I know, I was unable to walk. I physically could not walk on my leg without pain shooting through it. And what does this man and his wife do instead of taking me to the hospital? They just sit there. And don't do a goddamn thing about it. And the doctor even said, if it were to get any worse, I would have lost my leg. Within 48 more, you can, if I were to give it another 48 to 70 something hours, I would have lost my leg. I had to have it lanced and drained, which hurt like hell, like beyond anything I've ever had in my life. But that night before I had to come back, this man sat there and ripped and bashed 
and belittled not only myself, but my mother, my mom. And what did they do whenever I defended her and stuck up for not only my mom, but my family? His little fucking bitch wife grabbed me by my shirt, tried choking me and beating me. And not to mention she broke the necklace that was made from my brother's belt buckle. It was one of those belt buckles where if you turned it sideways to where it looks like a shield, it made a cross. And that was made for me special by my mom after my brother had passed away back in 2015. That was a year later after that. It was made special for me by her from him because he knew he was getting ready to go. We all knew that he was getting ready to die soon, that they had it made for me out of his belt buckle. And that night, my mom literally had to call the police to come and get me. And what happened? They get away with the physical assault. They got away with the verbal abuse. Like I said, I can respect my dad for serving in the military. 110%. I can respect that. But what I can't respect is what he's done with his life. Because when I was down there visiting, this man had no food in his fridge. It was literally lined with beer in the fridge. Like there was nothing but beer and like food that they ain't got in restaurants in the fridge. His backyard was lined with empty beer bottles driven upside down into the ground, lining his entire yard. Number three thing that he did while I was down there was more than three things. Um, this man left me in a bar on my own. Granted, you know, I'm old enough I should have been able to handle it, which I was in. But the point being, instead of sitting there at the bar catching up with me, what does this man do? He goes and fucking gets high. And then what do I find that next morning when we get back to the house? This man, I had to drag this fucking sorry drunk piece of shit out of bed. Which he got pissed about, which I didn't give a fuck. But this man strung out on fucking drugs. And I'm not talking, you know, weed or anything like that. This man was strung out on drugs. So, like I said, I can respect my dad or my now ex-dad for being military. I respect that 110%. But as a, as a man, as a human being, there is no way on God's green earth I can respect that man as a man. By him doing what he did to me along with his wife, he not only showed me that he's a poor, sorry excuse for a man, but that he is a disgrace to his country and his branch of the military by doing what he did to me.
what he did is very disgraceful and is very looked down upon within the military. So like I said, I'm sorry, but not sorry. This man is an is a very bad example for the US military. This man does not deserve any respect. This man is a sorry excuse of Like I said, I respect him for serving the military, yes. But doing what he did is looked down upon by the military. What he did with his life is so fucked. Like I said, I can respect him as a, you know, as a soldier, as, you know, a military member. But I cannot respect him and will not respect him as a human being, as a man. You guys don't know how many times I have been on and off in tears because he fucking decided to disown me. Because this man sat there and told me I would not make it in music on my own, that I needed to give up, that I needed to face reality. And for some time, I've been wanting to say it to him. So today, I finally got the courage to stand up and say something to him and his bitch wife. And what do I get back? Oh, I need to learn how to, you know, check my spelling. And that's harassment. No, it's not harassment. That's just pure fucking being honest. That's just being pure fucking honest. So sorry if I don't spell everything correctly, but at least I'm honest. And what does this man do for a living now? I'll admit, yeah, he has a good job working at a golf course. But this man fucking carries a goddamn pistol to a golf course. He carries his fucking service pistol from the military to a golf course. Motherfucker, who needs a pistol on a goddamn golf course? Ain't nobody gonna try to fucking kill you out there. Except maybe a golf ball or two and that's it. What are you gonna do? Try to shoot the golf balls? Good fucking luck hitting those. Sorry, you're not fucking Deadpool or Deadshot. You can't fucking make a shot like that. So, now you guys know the truth about why I posted what I posted with his picture earlier. And why I said what I said about him. This man doesn't have PTSD or anything like that. He would just rather be a drunk, high, strung out, drug addict piece of shit rather than have a relationship with his own son. And if that makes me a bad person... I'm sorry. And if I lose friends over this, ask me if I give a shit. I'm being honest. So to those of you that do agree or disagree, either way, at the end of the day, I had every right and reason to say what I said in that photo that I posted about him earlier today. This man is a poor excuse for a human being. 
Him and his wife both are. They not only got away with verb abusing me, but they got away with physically assaulting me. And because of them, I almost lost my fucking leg. If I didn't come home, my leg would be gone right now. I would not have a right leg. Because let me tell you something. For two days straight, I was so sick. And so food deprived. Because of how they treated me. That my mom had called in our our good friend of the family who was a teacher back in my old school, Roosevelt Academy. We call in my teacher, Mr. Smith, and he was, <clears throat> excuse me, he was so gracious and kind enough to set me up in a motel room for a couple of days until my mom could get there. But within that days, I was so food deprived that I did nothing but drink coffee and sleep just to keep myself from getting sick. It took me a month to gain my weight back. I was at almost 120 pounds when I initially left. When I came back, I was almost down to 94 pounds. That's how much weight I had lost because I was barely even able to. Because all they wanted to do was go out and get drunk and party and do dumb shit. So for those of you that still think I need backhanded for the post I made earlier, maybe you'll watch this and realize just what the fuck I went through. And how traumatizing and hurtful that was for me. And how hurtful it is now, knowing that he disowned me for no fucking reason at all. Except for the fact that I proved him and his bitch of a wife, who's a fucking psychopath, wrong. His wife is a psychopath and a compulsive liar. And you guys don't understand just how deeply that hurts me, even now just saying that he disowned me and that he's dead to me. You don't know how much that hurts me inside. I've been on and off in tears all day because of that shit. Because it's not fair to me that I lose the one person that I really loved and cared about when I was a kid. This is the man who helped my mom raise me. And to see what he's become, how can I in any way respect that? How can I forgive him and his wife for what they did to me? Not only physically, but verbally and mentally. They scarred me.
like I said, you guys can be mad at me all you want, but I hope that when you watch this, you understand the truth of why I said what I said about him and his wife. Yes, as ex-military members, they both do deserve respect. I'll admit that. But as, as human beings, as a regular civilian man and woman, I can't respect them. I cannot respect them morally. I hope this guys gave you I hope this gave you guys an understanding of what I go through with them and what I had to go through and what I'm still dealing with even now mentally and how bad it hurts me watching my own dad die from drinking drugs and getting high. Like I said, if you're still mad at me after this, that's fine. But I hope you guys understand why I did what I did.